What happened? <laughs> what is time? What is time? That's an excellent question. It's an illusion. Oh, he's gone. Tom is also an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I if I lean too <laughs> back, I become one. Goodbye. Amy <laughs> is going Goodbye. to be the top case. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Joypad Podcast. As always, I am one of your hosts, Fleming, and I am super excited to be here tonight. I personally am drinking just water. Um, otherwise, I am feeling very good. I have personally also been playing XCOM 2, and I'm nearly done, and I'm so excited to be there. With me tonight, as always, is Megan, Tom, and Pinto. And we'll start with Megan. How are you doing? What are you drinking? And what are you playing? Oh, boy doing great i took the the I took today and tomorrow off from work so i don't get yelled at uh super so nice you don't get yelled at yeah i get yelled at uh professionally for a living uh that's what i do so ah, yeah. i thought it was like a <laughs> take your vacation days because everybody's home because of pandemic. no, oh, no okay. i just i just took two days off because you know i didn't want to work uh i do like a paycheck though so anyway yeah i'm doing that i'm drinking some bottled water and what am I playing? I actually downloaded Fall Guys on the PlayStation 4. Are you guys familiar with that at all? I am not. Nay. It's from Devolver, and it is a 60-player battle royale. So think, like, Takeshi's Castle, like MXC, meets Ragdoll Physics. <laughs> um, did you ever see Gang Beast? It's like this super goofy fighting game where you just, like, it's super cartoony. Is that ringing any bells? You all look confused. You can't even um, see me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I have Fleming and Tom confused. to look at. <laughs> they look confused. It looks but it's like, adorable. Right? It's super vibrant, super adorable. You're just this blob with arms and legs, and you run around trying to complete obstacle courses or, um, like, you have giant soccer balls. You're trying to score goals. So... Uh, the game is played in five rounds, and it's just survival for the most part. Um, but yeah, it was a free, temporarily free game for PlayStation Plus. Now, I think you have to pay $20 for it, but it's available on everything at this point. It's a lot of fun. It's super stupid. The physics are ridiculous. Um, but I'm I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm, I'm stroking my mustache and intrigue <laughs> because this looks like something I would want to play. It's, it just yeah, looks it, crazy. <laughs> It's great. It, they're having some server issues right now, but I, I mean, if you can, if you don't mind paying twenty dollars for it, or you can find it free. I know certain consoles were putting it out for free for a brief period of time, um, and I know it's on the PC, so it, it's worth it. <laughs> it looks kind of like Wipeout, like the TV yeah. show Wipeout. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like uh, I think of MXC. Um, M oh, M you know what? I couldn't. I was trying to think of what MXC was, and I went to a video game yeah. space instead of like the TV oh, show I'm that sorry, yeah. was a uh, like what, it was like a Japanese game show, right? It Where was they... yeah, based on I think it was called Takeshi's Castle in Japan. Okay. Um, but then it came to America, and I, we just added ridiculous dubbing to it. But people running <laughs> through like stupid obstacle courses and just getting the crap beat out of them um but yeah wipeout is a great example but there are different levels there are different modes um there's like a giant soccer game one where you steal tails from other people um but yeah you just play five rounds and and try to win it's it's for a battle royale game i get really sick and tired of them but it's a new concept so i i'm i'm really enjoying it my gosh, there's a football mode. I I, I love the idea. <laughs> <laughs> and you just flop around. That's all you do. It's just like you're just a ragdoll. That's it. Um, They're but yeah. literal fall guys. I get it. I <laughs> yeah. get things. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been playing lately. I took a break from Ghost and Paper Mario. So oh, and I decided to buy Skyrim again for the third time on the Nintendo. Megan. <laughs> Listen. This listen. is okay. I'll give it you permission. It was on sale. It was on sale. 
uh, for twenty nine ninety nine, and then I realized that I had is what is the Nintendo currency from when you buy games? Uh, dog coin. coins, gold coins. Yeah, yeah. So I apparently had a sum of gold coins saved up, and I was able to get additional money off of it. So it worked awesome. out. I didn't pay full price. Are you able to do console like commands like you can in PC? on switch or have you not played it yet well, no i haven't played it yet um it was taking forever to download because gotcha. that'd be my biggest fear that, like you wouldn't be able to um do all the console commands all the manipulation that you can do on pc like you can do on or do on switch like you can do on pc yeah i don't so. i don't think you can but i, I doubt expect yeah to either that it's available but i'm okay with it cool so good yeah that's me i'm gonna stop talking now and pass it to pinto how are you doing what are you drinking and i guess what are you playing uh i'm good i'm drinking uh a golden road golden road brewing melon cart which is a watermelon wheat ale with notes of honeydew and cantaloupe Ooh. Ooh. Okay. gotta do the sip on camera rip it and rip it <laughs> oh yeah grip it and rip it baby Ooh, it's actually really good uh, <laughs> definitely better than the pineapple and mango ones that also came in this same case, which is good. Uh, I have been playing nothing recently because I uh, got a new job and I have to work on the whole work-life balance thing, which traditionally for me for the past couple months has just been life, which isn't even true because I have no life. Uh, so I've just been working and sleeping a lot. I have not had much of a chance to play any video games it makes me sad megan today gifted me carrion which i am very much looking forward to playing uh it is a horror game where you get to play as the monster instead of the people that are trying to survive so i'm really looking forward to it and uh after the recording of this podcast we're going to be playing some good old war selection <laughs> da -bumna. And da -bumna. There, there will be glory to us but yeah, that that's about it for me. I, I don't have much else to add this week, unfortunately, in that realm. So I'm just going to pass it to Tom. All right. Hey, Pinto, there was one game that you did play that you didn't mention, and no one else mentioned, but we played a little bit more Diablo 3 this weekend. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. That feels wow. like it was so long ago. It was, <laughs> I mean, it was almost a week, right? But it, yeah, it yeah, feels so long ago. Close. I so, enjoyed it more this time. Um, the last than the first time we played it, even I feel like it's kind of getting its groove. Personally, we're hitting the it, stride. <laughs> well, I'll I'll say two things. I think um, it gets more fun over time because you understand it a little bit better and you just kind of accept the goofiness of it. Yeah. Um, things also are still dying even faster. <laughs> I just love the, <laughs> like the boss battle. We'll take. <laughs> yeah, that's. Um, so everyone should watch our video playthroughs of Diablo because we're all playing together uh, as a group and we're posting it to our YouTube channel. Um, but we take bets on how long it will take to kill the boss whenever we go into a boss battle. <laughs> and you, I, I think the most recent one, uh, I bet 17 seconds and I was the lowest bet and it took maybe eight seconds to kill <laughs> the boss. So, uh, it, it's pretty entertaining. We're, we're playing on the normal difficulty and the normal difficulty is just absurdly easy. So, um, but I did just want to call out that we've been playing that. Um, personally, um, I started playing The Last of Us 2, which I think I said I was about to start uh, the last time we recorded. Yep. Um, we're not super far. We just finished the dome and the parking garage, and we're ready to go to the quote-unquote fuck Fedra gate. Oh, I shouldn't have said <laughs> that. Uh, you can censor that in post. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But that is the terminology from the game, so I don't feel that bad. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it's been good. I've also uh, played uh, a wonderful cover of AHA's Take On Me in a very sad acoustic oh, fashion. Which that is be so my sad. favorite. <laughs> I, I loved that. Um, both that scene, which the guy I watched actually missed it. So I saw it later. I was like, she did that? And I had to watch it. It was awesome. Um, but that's probably like my, my favorite song from the entire thing. It's so um, good. Yeah, I, I think it's a good cover. Uh, it's not my favorite cover of that song. That honor belongs to uh, Real Big Fish. But uh, <laughs> well, <of course. laughs> um, I also then picked up the guitar, entered the practice mode, and played a little song I like to call Dilly 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 Boop. Dilly 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 Boop. 
it it was very strange and involved me smacking the touchpad in all kinds of maneuvers and configurations <laughs> while swinging the analog sticks around. Uh, but it was catchy enough that it's stuck in my head for way too long. Um, <laughs> trying to think if I've been playing anything else. That's that's mainly been it, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting further in that game. I enjoy it so far. I have not hit the part of the game that anyone or everyone thinks will make me not like it. So we'll see how life progresses in that direction. I I can't wait to discuss it with you when you are finished. I I can't wait either. Um, though I I will say I did call the uh, that Abby character is a terrible person and. <laughs> Like, as soon as I played her, I was like, if I just jump off the cliff, can I just end all the bad <laughs> stuff that she's going to do? I can change the I can, timeline. I can tell. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but I, I don't really have any complaints about that. I, I thought she was fine as an actual character and everything. So, yeah. So, Mr. Fleming, it is your topic It is my topic, jour. right? Yes. And it's so funny. So, Pinto, the new game, Carrion, is that what you called it? Yes. Is that what it is? Yes. So it's funny you mentioned that how you're playing as the um, the murderer, the villain in that game. Because we've had a lot of um, episodes recently, right, where we talked about stories, and then we talked about protagonists and antagonists and the dynamic there. And I was wondering, and, and in fact, Last of Us too. Now that I know how far Tom was, I can kind of say you play as Abby um, in The Last of Us Two. Spoilers. Um, but I wanted to talk about games where you play as a protagonist, you go through the game, potentially you beat the antagonist by the end of it or whatever, and you win. Um, I was wondering what other games, and since you're all very story-driven players, I would say, you're not as com like competitive game like I am, um, what other games out there that you guys play would you have liked to seen, you know, the, the equivalent of um, uh, an antagonist side of the story so where would you have liked to see you you know i'll take xcom 2 i mentioned that what if you played as you know advent and you were trying to take down xcom 2 the whole time you know those kind of concepts um so i'm going to open it up because again i don't play too many story games to co compared to you guys um but i mean if, if we want to start with something easy imagine if uh you know, you played Final Fantasy VI, but you played it from the perspective of Kefka. You know, so you were playing and you're like trying to, you know, build up your plan to, you know, kill the Emperor and then take over the world as a, a effective demigod. Um, Super something like villain. that. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I can think of one um, from what I think I've gone on record on this podcast and said is my favorite Final Fantasy or at least 1A, 1B. Uh, playing as Delita in Final Fantasy Tactics would be an incredible experience um, because he's set up very early on, not as an antagonist per se, but as kind of the, a parallel story that involves a lot of betrayal and manipulation. Um, it, you know, he's not the big bad at the end of the game, but he's a subversive character that just kind of plays everyone after getting played himself early on. So he just kind of crawls out from under the rock that life has dealt him as his personal kind of lot in life and puts the rock right on top of the people who put it there on top of him. So um, I think there's a lot to that character and a lot to um, the machinations behind him kind of mm -hmm. ascending to what is eventually the throne since he kind of, you know, slits throats all the way to the top yeah. um and I, I think it would be really interesting to follow that story and they did do when they re-released uh, war of the lions they added some side stories and missions that uh, expanded on delita's character um, which is pretty cool um but i think you could do an entire delita game uh, and see things from that perspective that kind of side road instead of ramza's and i honestly to some degree think that the game really is more of delita's story than the story of Ramza, the guy that fought Devil Jesus and then disappeared. Um, so, yeah. whereas the is the guy who rose from pauper to king. So, I, I agree. You know, it's funny. It's funny that we uh, talked last week about um, Final Fantasy Tactics in brief, right? And Delita did not even come up in that conversation because he's not 
a he's he's a bad guy, but he's not really. And I agree with you. I would have loved to see, you know, I I, I did play War of the Lions, the kind of expansion or you know, um, larger game. Um, and yeah, yeah, I agree. He he was such a cool character, and it would be great to see more of him. Yeah, side note, I totally meant to talk about Delita last week. I had it in my mind for like half a second and didn't come up. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. Megan, what about you? I don't know. I, I need to think about this one for a little bit. I got a noodle on it. Nothing's like coming to mind right away. But I've also played a lot. <laughs> I've played a lot of games. <laughs> As a person, no, like, a lot I like to play. We've all played a lot of games. I like games, to but... play. <laughs> Light me. Um, no, I have to think about this one. Get, get, get back to me. Okay, I guess I'll go then. Sorry. Uh, I don't know if it would be... They're not really considered antagonists, but I would love to play versions of Silent Hill because the whole thing with Silent Hill is that like, the town... The town's appearance changes depending on the person so when you play silent hill 2 you play as james and you know it's all foggy and spooky and rusty and there's sex demons everywhere because he has weird sexual thoughts going on all the time whereas you find out later on that one of the other characters angela you encounter her in a fire and he talks to her about it and she just says you can see it this is how it always looks to me. Hmm. Or when you speak to the little girl, Laura, the town just looks like a normal town to her. So in all those cases, the town manifests itself differently to every character. But I think in that case, like, it becomes a different game at that point. It's not s seeing it from someone else's viewpoint. It'd be completely different. So I don't know if that really counts. But basically what all that means is I just want more Silent Hill games. <laughs> It'll never happen. Shut up, Tom. Konami <laughs> has taken your dreams and just set them ablaze. I mean, you're probably right, but... Uh, you can yeah. play their new pachinko game opening at a parlor downtown <laughs> somewhere in Japan. Silent Hill Mobile Pachinko coming to a smartphone <laughs> near you. Hooray! <laughs> I'm sorry, that wasn't very joyful of me. But you're not wrong, so I can't be too I upset. Um, if I were to throw uh, another one out there that just left my brain a minute ago. <laughs> Shoot, I had it. I had it and it left me. Come on, Tom. Take, take that, me. Take on me. <laughs> take on me. Um... No, honestly, like, I, I think it's interesting. I think you have to have a relatable antagonist um, in any case like that where you try to put the player in their shoes. I think the Quantic Dream games, like we said last time out, did a good job of kind of doing that because in just about all of those games, you play as the antagonist or you get close to the antagonist. Yeah, you see all sides. Um, and I, you know, like, I think I said again last time, it makes for a better game when you can see their side. Um. Dang it, I really lost the one that I was going to talk about. One that I, I think would be interesting, and they did it a, a little bit, but I think Metal Gear Solid would be an interesting franchise. That's what I was just thinking of with, like, Ocelot and, yeah. Liquid. There's so many great characters that you can explore. Well, and even, like, one of the premises of the original Metal Gear Solid is that Liquid was, like, the commander of all the people who helped take over Shadow Moses. What a, what about a game where you play as Liquid, leading those people, taking on missions before the whole betrayal, terrorism, let's steal this island with a nuke and a Metal Gear on it kind of yeah. thing? Um, that would be kind of cool. And I think they explored that a little bit with the idea of Metal Gear 3 playing as Big Boss. Um, because prior to that point, it was like Big Boss is really, you know, the head of whatever Liquid's a part of. And, you know, he's the ultimate bad guy that you don't even fight. Like, you fight Liquid at the end, but the shadow of Big Boss still looms large, even though he's dead. Um, so that was 
kind of cool. It's kind of a different take on it. I didn't super love the fact that they made him just look exactly like Solid Snake, <laughs> even <laughs> though it makes sense because yeah. he's a clone. But, um, I mean, I I really love that game in particular, Metal, Metal Gear Solid 3. But, yeah, play as Ocelot, play as Liquid, play as any of those people at any point in time in that game. I would really like to see that because... Um, I think it would help too. I mean, Ocelot, you get a little bit more of his character as that series goes on, especially in three, you got a lot yeah. of that. Um, but Liquid, I think, is still kind of left out there as more of a caricature than some of the other characters. And I think there's more depth to that character that you could add with a game like that. For sure. That wasn't the first thing that I thought of, though, so it's still back there in the back of my head somewhere in that two minutes of silence where I was going, I don't know. Um... <laughs> That's what editing's oh, for. I remembered it. Gary Oak. Aww. That, that would be depressing, though, because I was just thinking about, I was actually thinking about Gary Oak, but I was also thinking about, like, Bowser. Because yep. think about yep. it. Like, you're the oh, quote-unquote yeah. bad guy. But if you're someone who's played a Mario game at all, if you were playing from the perspective of Bowser, knowing how all the Mario games go, the entire game would just be you going, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, he's coming. Oh my god, I thought I got away with it. And then uh, you fall into some lava, and it's over. You know what would be really interesting would be like a take on the Mario Maker franchise where you are Bowser and you're trying to design levels to beat Mario. <laughs> so you have yeah. to make them really hard, but you have to earn your like pieces to design the level. That kind of is what Mario, Mario Maker. Maker. Yeah, that yeah, kind of is, is what I mean, it is. So there is Mario Maker where you're making levels and if you have um, N Nintendo online, you're able to let other people play as Mario and try to get through it. So it kind of exists, but it's not from the perspective necessarily of... There Bowser. There's no story mode attached to it. I just think it no. might be fun to it might be fun to attach a story mode to that. I don't know how you have like a PC or you know like a, a computer yeah, player like try to run that and make it a uh, a fair sort of thing. Um, but I, I yeah. think I think it's interesting. I think it's out there for someone to grab at some point. It's, it's so funny. So Tom, I was letting you, I was letting you try to figure out um, the one before I jumped in, and Gary Oak and um bowser came to mind and i i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with um you know it, let's take bowser because bowser's more common and um i think everyone kind of knows that mario is going to win in the end he always does it's um it, it's, it's kind of how it is but there's something um great about it, like a tragic uh hero i guess in this case be antagonist but a tragic uh situation you know mm -hmm. So I don't think there's anything wrong with kind of knowing as the player that you playing as Bowser and your strategy this time is this is how you're going to capture Princess Peach, but then Mario's, you know, basically this looming threat that's coming to get her back. Like, that's kind of cool. I think it's a fun top, like idea. It's just how do you kind of complete that story? Yeah. I assume you complete it with him losing, but, you know, mm -hmm. how do you keep it exciting and not inevitable? Well, think of all the odd curveballs you can throw in there, too, because yeah. we have the idea in Super Mario RPG of Bowser teaming up with Mario to take on a, a bigger, different threat. But what if you make it so that Bowser can negotiate with Mario at certain points? What if you make it so that, you know, Bowser I get custody takes... of Princess Peach on weekends, OK? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's not just Princess Peach. You know, Bowser is also a threat to the rest of the Toad Kingdom. So what if he, like, takes, you know, additional, like, Toads or whatever? <laughs> and, you know, he, he starts, like, negotiating, like, all right, I won't attack, like, this area if you leave me alone here or something like that. You know, I'm sure, you know, they would put a more Nintendo spin on it where it would be, like, uh, you know, Maybe, um, you know, Bowser sends the Koopa kids over to this area or something like that. And, you know, Mario has a chance to defeat some of them, but maybe you do better than expected. You know, I don't know. I'm just seeing like different ways. Maybe you could work in some sort of I'm almost thinking of that Romance of the Three Kingdoms uh, uh, system that I talked about before, where there's a weird kind of like debate thing. I mean, maybe yeah. Bowser wins popular, you know, <laughs> popularity in the Mushroom Kingdom 
and the people elect him to be their king or something over time. Maybe he does more good for them than bad, and you know he's better than Princess Peach at uh, at doing it or or something. You know, well, I just I think mean, there are all kinds of weird little angles that a Nintendo game so can take. So if like, you take like uh, Mario Odyssey, um, right? So take Mario Odyssey or uh, Mario sixty four, and you know. Your goal is to like collect stars so you can break through doors and everything. Like, imagine instead of that, you know Mario's coming. You know he's going to be there soon, and you're, you know, playing as Bowser and you're running around your castle, and you know, the you run into a Koopa Troopa who's like, "Hey, you need to," you know, those blocks from over there, and it's like a mission you have to jump through and potentially fight, you know, some of your rogue. Uh, monsters in your castle, something like that, you know, or you just have to, yeah. or like the Koopa Troopa could be like, you know, oh no, I've accidentally um, already set up all the traps, Bowser, but you're going to have to get through so you can get, you know, this trap fixed before Mario comes. Like you could play it off as like you're building up for Mario. And even in the end, if you lose, like at least you got to hear like the Bowser side of the story. It, it's, I mean, Mario and, and Nintendo games are always kind of, I don't want to say cheesy, but you know, kind of where I'm going, where like yeah. the good guy is always going to come in. It's the same concept as Mickey Mouse. You know, the good guy wins in the end. It's just, you can kind of have fun with it. You know, you can kind of, you know, have some background on Bowser. So I think that would be a really fun one. Well, in regards to um, Gary Oak, just really quickly, Gary Oak is, uh, you kind of get to play as him when you play Red and Blue. You know, the concept there is Ash and Gary. Um, so you're not playing as Gary Oak but you kind of get that concept. Like it would be basically the same game unless you make Gary a little bit more of a, you know, a jerk throughout it and doesn't help people like you do in, in red well, and blue as much. Here's what I think. Um, forget red and blue so much. Like keep that as a starting point, but Gary's a jerk that entire time. What if instead, no, he's not. He would smell you Pokemon. later. <laughs> Uh, listen, his uh, Raticate uh, dies, all right? Oh, it does. Yeah, you're right. And you know what? It becomes like a pivotal moment for him. So what if you do like what the anime did, and you have him have a pivot, and you do that kind of after <laughs> the game of Red and Blue, and then you make Gary's story of redemption after that. Pokemon and... Gary. Yeah, Pokemon <laughs> Gary. I'd play that. Gary There's eight, I actually would play that, too. 8,000 Pokemon mods on the internet. One of you nerds needs to do it. Hot um, take. <laughs> Stutze. Yeah, we do that a lot. It probably already exists. We just don't know about it yet. Yeah, let's just Google Pokemon Gary mod. Tom's on it. What about uh, Ganon from Zelda? See, that'd be an interesting experience. It would depend on like what iteration of Zelda game you pick. Because if you did, yeah. like, Ocarina of Time, it's like, well, Ganon's the only male Gerudo. That's going to be a good time. Uh, but uh, also you just, say like... say that so weird? Because it had to be weird. <laughs> but, like, the thing with the Legend of Zelda games is it's always the same characters, but they're always yeah. set in different worlds, yeah. times, universes. So, hey, Gary's oh, mod, there it found is. It. Um... <laughs> I think like I it would really depend on I what universe you decide to put it in, I guess. Yeah, I, I would I would say Wind Waker and Ocarina. Ooh, Wind Waker would be good. Or yeah. playing as the King of Red Lions. I'm a boat. <laughs> oh, well, what about I think like Origins of Ganon is kind that's, of that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, he's a pig man, and Who then hurt uh, you. Why did you turn out this way? <laughs> what gave you such severe ambition to raise the world over right? and over and over again? Um, I like um, uh, shoot, uh, Breath of the Wild would be kind of an interesting. Yeah, word yeah. There. That game had all kinds of uh, questions about Prelude, to be honest with you, because it's like the sort of same world but just racked by devastation by the time you start playing it so yeah. uh, there's a lot of opportunity in that universe i still haven't beaten breath of the wild such a good game yeah, i still don't have a switch oh. one day i'm planning on getting one eventually i'll let you know when i do speaking of nintendo still um tom nook and uh why he's such a money grubbing 
That'd be awesome. Jerk. <laughs> because you curse. play as Tom Nook. That would be so fun. I would Starting love it. Starting as a, a wee raccoon. Yeah. I would love it if you just start up as a game. I don't really know this Animal Crossing so much, but I would love it if you just start up a game. He just wakes up one day and goes, I like money. And then it just fades <laughs> to black. And then it starts up the regular game. He gets his first bell. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny. He's like Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob. Yeah, Square Pants. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know that origin story. Where did you come from? Why Where do you did do you what go? you do? <laughs> On an island. Why do you have money? <laughs> that would be really exciting. And he's not even a villain. It's just kind of how no. Animal Crossing yeah. uh, plays. You know, all of them do. So, like, mm -hmm. it's it'd be fun to do something on the opposite end where, like, you are... Even if it's not like a origin story necessarily, maybe a little bit, but like it's the idea of like, you know, you playing as more of the merchant and you right. are trying to get people to go to these islands and try to build up your business or something like that. It'd be fun. And I bet you a lot of people that play Animal Crossing would play it. Oh, definitely. You know, going back to Pokemon for a minute, uh, not just the Gary Oak idea, but I think it would be interesting to play a gym trainer. Uh, um, like gym leader yeah yeah mm. um like the origin of a gym leader or you know something like that and just kind of how you could expand that role in that sort of league i think it's difficult because of their static position in a town but i yes. think the idea is there somewhere. i just well i've always thought about that because it's like you know i played red blue yellow it's like all right brock's the first guy you you face He's got two Pokemon, a Geodude and an Onyx, and they're both, like, level 10. How did he become a gym leader? Okay. Hey, man, well, they his have dad to make died. the levels. Okay. I know. I know. I, I know. <laughs> but it's just, like, when you think about it logically like that, you're like, okay. Like, is the theory that you're a gym leader, you had to have been able to, like, take on the Elite Four or something like that. I don't think Brock oh, was yeah, taken on that. the Elite Four. not that at all. So, so, oh, man, this is going to become, like, a Pokemon episode. So, how much Well, the, uh... I want to go back to Mario, too, eventually. So we'll, we'll, we'll go back to Mario in just a second. In just a second. I just have a question. Did you ever actually watch most of, like, the Pokemon TV series? No. I remember you were no. way okay. into it in college so for a while. So, I am way into the Pokemon series, and we can have a top, like, a discussion about it. But long story short... From my understanding, best that I can remember, Brock is the gym leader because his father was the gym leader until his father up and disappeared. And like all the fathers of, in Pokemon yeah. world. And then the other thing, too, just to point this out, for all the Pokemon people that are like, oh my god, what the heck, how does he know this? There's actually more than eight badges, of it, like not in the games that you play, but in the actual world of pokemon there's plenty more badges that you can get and you need to have a certain number of badges so you can enter those elite competitions so that's so, that's why it's yeah. canon that gary oak had 10 badges in the anime yes. holy so shit that, i thought that yeah. was just a meme no ah i, exactly I curse that. too dang it you know what when you're talking about gary you can curse all you want because gary's awesome yeah so that's exactly why i've watched like three of them um the english dubbed ones though i, I can't i can't do the the reading um if the it's in japanese dubs not yeah. subs but anyway jumping back to mario pinto what did you want to oh. I, I did it cut you off the last time you wanted to say something about that um i know megan you're playing origami king right now have any of yeah. you guys like how many of the paper mario games have any of you guys played i haven't I played, played any the of them one. i've played one and i played uh i think it's called 3d land or something like that you okay. kind of switched back and forth between 3d and 2d it was interesting i don't really remember much other than it being fun um i've played the first two so the first one was paper mario on the n64 and that one was pretty basic as far as like oh bowser kidnapped the princess you have to go rescue her done uh the second one the thousand year <laughs> door which is like everyone says it's the best paper mario game which I agree, but I can't compare it to many others. Uh, the princess gets captured, but not by Bowser. And in between the chapters of the story, you play as the princess at one point, and then you play as Bowser. And Bowser has a story, and he is an antagonist, 
but he's not the main antagonist. And you get to you get to play like platforming levels as Bowser. It's it's strange. It's really fun, but the the problem I have with it, even though I think it's cool, is that they make Bowser out kind of to be like a bumbling fool, which is like he's supposed to be like you know a big scary turtle guy, but he's like, <laughs> Ma, I love fried eggs. Why are we talking about going out on picnics? It's like, uh. You know, I, I I don't know. I those games are quirky and they're meant to be like a little tongue in cheek and silly. But I would hope that if you were to focus on Bowser as a character, he would be a little more like gung ho and uh, you know, badass and things like that. I don't know. Well, Pinto, I, I maybe you agree with me. I, I liked the portrayal of Bowser in Super Mario RPG. Where he that was... was a good portrayal. Like, yeah. yeah, he showed his sensitive side, and also like he was like this tough badass leader who yeah. was only teaming up with Mario because he had to, you know. So I thought that was a good portrayal. Whereas in the Thousand Year Door, it's kind of like, uh, you're kind of making him out to be like a fall guy almost. Yeah. I, so I mean, I I would really like to see. A Bowser game that kind of goes more off of like the the Super Mario RPG thing, and I I mean I love the idea of platforming as Bowser though. Um, one thing that I actually thought of earlier when we were talking about that was just kind of picking up power ups as Bowser. It's meat in the Thousand Year Door. You just pick up pieces of meat instead of mushrooms, and you get bigger, and you can breathe fire. It's pretty great. <clears throat> I'm all about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if we actually said it, but it's funny we keep jumping on to uh, Bowser, and and I think there's a reason for that. Um, but he would be it. So we talked about how like Mario's coming, he's gonna um, you know, take back Princess Peach. You're gonna lose ultimately. Just do a a pre-roll. So almost every Mario game begins with Peach is in the castle. You gotta go save her. Or whatever most of them do or a lot of them do um do the the pre-roll effectively of that game so super mario 64 peach is going to be caught you know right away at the start you're trying to get to her just do the whole part of how did bowser actually accomplish that did you guys play super mario galaxy no no the opening of that game shows bowser kidnapping the princess and it's hardcore like he yeah. comes in on like a floating pirate ship that can also fly in space and blast the crap out of the Toad Kingdom and steals the entire castle. And Mario so is like trying to run in and like, oh no, the princess or whatever. So imagine oh no, that spaghetti. That's Luigi. <laughs> imagine that the story there. So let's take that beginning. I don't know what. I, again, I didn't play that one, so I don't remember what happens after that. Let's just take the beginning of that. Um, you know, he has to get the access to this ship maybe he has to you know uh, kind of plan out his strategy maybe he has to like i don't know if luigi's in that one at all but like maybe he has to like take out luigi basically defeat luigi so he can you know put put this thing on so you're actually still winning in that game even though you know that that game leads back to a game from you know years ago or whatever that so that's such a cool concept to me i love kidding. to do that you're kind of thinking what I was thinking, which is almost like, what if you take the idea of almost like the heist setups in like a payday or something like that, and oh apply my it to Super Mario <laughs> with Bowser planning how he's going to set up different things. Guys, and I, like I, 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 I want to be the shy guy. That's my guy. That's my character. <laughs> I even get to wear the mask. Yeah, I was going to say, what mask are you going to wear? You're going to uh, customize Shy Guy's mask. Yeah, the Dio de la Muerte <laughs> Shy Guy. <laughs> but I just, I, I love the idea of, like, taking that. And it's a very Nintendo idea of yeah. trying to apply a new sort of uh, scheme to an old sort of uh, game. And I, I could definitely see them doing that. I could definitely almost see, like, you know, board game mechanics, too, of, like, trying to, like, shuffle around the pieces, or even stealth, like, trying to have someone sneak into the castle to open a certain door so that Bowser can get in and try and get the prince. And maybe, like, he gets, you know, the end of every Mario level is the princess is in another castle, 
maybe the end of every Bowser level is you almost got caught, or the princess isn't where you thought she was, or, or the princess like is in another castle, or she's and in you... another castle. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't know. That just seems like that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> so we idea. have already. I'm just going to point this out really quickly. So for those that just jumped on this episode, we have actually Tom specifically has already called out. Um, some games that he missed, like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and now one's coming out. So I am really <laughs> hopeful right now. We're going to get a game called, like, Bowser or something like that. You know, some kind of Nintendo-esk game uh, name. Bowser, like, the so second excited. story. Bowser, under yeah. the shell. Super Ooh, stealth ew. princess. Um, but the other thing I was going to say, so we're really sticking on Bowser here. Um, Pinta, you said that you, you liked the idea of him being an intense kind of character. Did I understand you right? I'd like I'd like that, yeah, because like, I I, like, I just think like it sticks in my craw that they make him goofy and like not very smart, at uh, least in I that iteration. Liked of, um, I liked the idea of him being, um, oh goodness, I just finished I just played it and I I can't remember Final Fantasy Nine uh, Night. Steiner? Steiner. Steiner. I was like, I was like, Stam. I couldn't remember. Steiner. Rusty. Yeah. The idea of like that would be kind of fun too. Um, you know, where he's more of a, a like kind of goofy character. I think that would be kind of exciting. But he's really I, intense at the same time. He's just kind of clumsy on it. I, I, I like I, the idea of him just falling into it, like not really yeah. having any idea as to what's going on. Shy guy is the mastermind. <laughs> yes. What, what the man behind the mask. Be, his dad used to be in the princess kidnapping business, but he <laughs> left it open to Bowser. <laughs> Bowser, Bowser just doesn't know what to do with it. This is glorious. My dad's so good at kidnapping princesses. I gotta live up to his legacy. Oh, like, oh God! <laughs> this is Face's son from GTA Five. <laughs> when, oh my God, that's great, Tom. I, I, Tom yeah. is is Bowser being voiced by John Travolta in your version? Because that's what it sounded like you were doing. Yeah, but man, it's so it's so good at. Kidna- now I just sound like Goofy, actually. <laughs> so good at being a, a bad guy. I don't know how to be a bad guy, but I'm going to figure it out, okay? Um, another terrible movie tie-in that came to my mind early on, which is why you can see me laughing for the past, like, five minutes. Uh, <laughs> Weekend at Bowser's. <laughs> And you just have like uh, Koopas like pulling strings on a Bowser in a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses or something. Oh God! I uh, Lakitu in the cloud that's just got like the fishing <laughs> spots. It's a marionette. That's perfect. <laughs> I don't I don't know where it would go from that, but just <laughs> the idea came into my mind of like, what if you know someone else is pulling the strings and Bowser's like incapacitated the, just... the Nintendo PR team is going to jump like find this and be like no this is such a bad <laughs> idea please stop this <laughs> yeah please stop right now no, we we have several more items for you on this the joypad pitch cast uh... <laughs> well i i actually we got our cease and desist letter uh yeah nintendo's pretty bad about that so <laughs> Um, I actually have a game that I can bring up for this exact situation that already exists. The Misadventures of Tron Bond. Oh, yeah. Which the Bond family in Mega Man Legends is one of your main antagonists. And there was a game that came out after Mega Man Legends called The Misadventures of Tron Bond that focuses entirely on that family. And it's a prequel to Mega Man Legends 1. And you play as the bad guys. And you find out why they're doing what they're doing in Mega Man Legends 1 through playing this game. They're uh, in debt. Very, very, very bad debt. And they're pirates, and they're really bad at it. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. <laughs> did that I game know a suffer lizard king. From, uh, that, uh... Did, did that game suffer from any of like the whole... You know, Mega Man's gonna win at the end of the day. Did you see him? Like, no. I, I actually didn't play that one. No, you. There is no reference to Mega Man at all. What oh. happens at the end of the game is they find a new destination to make their next big score, which is Cadillac Island, which is where all of Mega Man Legends takes place. Ah, oh, cool. Again, a good idea because you get to learn about them, but it doesn't kind of interfere. Doesn't 
um, you know, lead you. It doesn't make you know that they're going to ultimately lose in the end. They can't have to kind of find some, you know, contrived way to get to an ending. They just put it up to that moment of where they're going to become the the villain in the next game. Yeah, um, it's a really good idea. Speaking of Mega Man, though, uh, there's another antagonist in that series that I think you could do more with, and that is this guy right here. Oh, my camera's oh, being goofy. Oh, Proto Man? Proto Man. Yeah, boy. That'd be fun. They never do a whole lot with him, but if uh, if you can do Mega Man Legends, I would also like to see Proto Man Legends 110%. There you, Capcom really hasn't been doing much with Mega Man anymore, huh? No, and it's a shame. Uh, there's a bunch of weird Mega Man RPGs on like the Game Boy, uh, like Net Battle and yeah. stuff like that. Um, which I have a couple of them, and I've never played them just because there's some sort of strange child-friendly Mega Man RPG card game. But I'm open to trying them out. I just haven't really had the time among everything else. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of like uh, lore that was kind of put into the ideas of like Proto Man and Mega Man, and Proto Man was never entirely. Um, a bad bad guy like sometimes he would help Mega Man out and stuff like that so I think there's more that could be explored there uh granted Mega Man's a relatively simple concept but uh he's a cool character he looks neat I want to hear more about how cool he is and how he's a conflicted anti-hero uh there's a band called the Proto Men there are they're pretty good yeah just wanted to throw that out there I had one other thing, um, and I know you guys have never heard this from me before, but I think Mass Effect. Ah, uh, there it is. Time to take a drink. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I mentioned XCOM too. I, I thought Mass Effect would come pretty early. I, I, uh, I had an N7 wedding cake. Okay, my, my yes, wife, you did. My did wife, really? my wife wanted it, so <laughs> it was it was a series we played together. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot in Mass Effect about defending against the Reapers, but the Reapers are not a very understood threat. Uh, it's just a, this cycle that just kind of comes, and it's almost that they're defending themselves against organic life uh, to some degree, but there's a lot that you could expand on and, and give that side of the story. Now, I don't think you could ever really play a game as a Reaper, because a Reaper is basically a giant... Um, mechanical ship-like being that also has sentience. And I don't really think you can make that a game. But the first Mass Effect game introduced the idea of a Reaper working with uh, Saren, uh, who is a Torian uh, humanoid character um, who just gets put under their influence. So I think you could kind of project through a, a character like that uh, and explore more of the the rationale of the Reapers. Because I think there must have been something that they injected into his mind, you know, some sort of reason to help them, even though he's seeing through some sort of delirium. And I think that would be an interesting game. I... I'm, I'm right there with you on those kind of games, you know, where the you... Um, you you wake up basically and you're immediately you're with the good guys the idea of going back before that what did you do up until that moment that you were captured because again you kind of know where the story's gone but i like that those kind of those kind of games you know expand it could be expanded upon quite significantly um that whole uh concept that you know the the lore's already built the world's already built so it's kind of easy for these companies to just say well, let's do the first part of this game just in reverse, you know, just better than Star Wars. <laughs> something like that. Megan, I jumped on your toes. Were you going to oh, say no, something? Oh, no, no. No worries. Oh, okay. um, it sounded like you were. I was, but you're good. Um, <clears throat> to talk about games that we always talk about, um, I, I would like to know more about the Fireflies from mm -hmm. The Last of Us. I don't, I don't know. The, yes. It be... Almost interesting to get that origin story. Yeah. Because there definitely is one. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, that almost takes you to the kind of idea of, you know, The Walking Dead, where they have fear of The Walking Dead. 
Yeah. I, I think that's kind of inevitable in that universe. Um, and I'm mm-hmm. almost glad that that's not what they chose to do for Last of Us 2. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, but I think eventually... I think eventually that'll get made. Uh, for some reason, my my predicting heart tells me that, <laughs> and I'll be happy to play that. But I'm sure they'll find a way to make them sympathetic too. Of course, you know because they're at least what we were aware of. Their goal was to find a cure. Exactly. And you know, fuck Fedra. Hey, lots of censoring <laughs> gonna happen this episode. Oh man. We- Remember that time I played a song at the beginning of this where it went boom, boom, bam, boom, bam, boom. That's just going to go over every time someone swears. <laughs> that was going to be like a duck or something. Didn't we agree upon a duck? Yeah. I mean, I usually just do a beep. I guess I could do a duck. Do a duck. Um, I know, Tom, you didn't uh, really play Final Fantasy 15, but they did. Uh, it sucks. It was DLC, but they did episodes that kind of showed the other characters i haven't played any of them i want to but they did like you know episode ignis and they did one for gladion they did one for prompto but they also did one for arden who is the big bad of the game and i would really like to play that one because i feel like it would give you some backstory on you know why he is the big bad and all that which isn't really explained in the game very much i don't think which is why it's kind of irritating that they made a dlc and you'd have to pay for it but i would still like to see it square likes money (laughs) all game companies like money i will say like the they they did an expansion pass for that game and pretty much all of the dlc content was available with it with the exception of his story bummer oh yeah i remember Hmm. hearing that yeah. So that was the only one I didn't play. But yeah, he would be a super interesting character to see. You know, not to jump away from this too much, but if we're going full Final Fantasy, it struck me one <laughs> You never go full fi- full Final <laughs> Fantasy, man. We go full Final Fantasy all the time. It's I know. It's what we do. <laughs> it's true. Um, it's a common game. So. But uh, an often overlooked character that I think would be a great choice would be Final Fantasy VI's General Leo. You, yeah, because you, you do get to play as him for like a tiny bit. Very brief moment. Yeah. yeah. And he's he's very much like the conflicted hero of the Empire um, and doesn't seem like a bad person, but he's definitely of the Empire. So I think it would be kind of interesting to follow his story through the beginning of that game um, and just mm-hmm. how he's dealt with the, the goings-on of the Emperor and Kafka up to that point. I think that would be interesting. I'd also like to play as uh, Fusoya from Final Fantasy IV and live up on the moon for an entire <laughs> game and fly around in a giant whale. You know. You could always do Tell of the Before Years where he remembers how to cast Flare and Ultima. Yeah. And uh, has MP. <laughs> oh, what, oh, or Final Fantasy V where you're ex-death who's a tree. I'd like oh. to play a game as a tree. And then there's the really... Like, that game has had several translations, uh, many of which were inaccurate. But the one that came out on uh, the PlayStation 1 in the Anthology Collection... Uh, the wise sage turtle was named Guido, which I found very. I was like, "That's a that's a weird translation, man." Guido, the the sage turtle, but all right. Hey, he's a chooch. I, I I'd play as Guido. Uh, Guido the chooch space turtle. Hey, go get some gabagool. Mm-hmm. Gabagool. Uh, um, I I would really love. Uh, I don't know if this really fits in with the theme, but I would really love a remaster of Final Fantasy V because if there is a game that needs a story uplift but has the best job class system, it is Final Fantasy V. <laughs> as long as you leave the mistranslated main character's name as Butts. Butts! <laughs> that... They changed it to Bart's, and I'm mad about it. Nah, he's Butts in my heart. He he Butts. <laughs> he Butts. We Butts. What other great... You know who you know who I would never want to see an antagonist version of the game is Sorceress Ultimisha from Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, light bulb head? <laughs> She's a light bulb. 
Yeah, I, my, my life is a Sylvania light bulb. <laughs> um, I mean, unless you subscribe to the uh, Renoa is Ultimisha theory, it's a fan theory, which is cool and has some credence, but has been shot down by the creator of the game, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I would find it interesting if that game were based around uh, Edia as the main threat and to kind of play things from her perspective. Uh, I think that would be an interesting concept. Um, likewise, I don't think it would be interesting to play the Sephiroth game. Uh, I think every one of us has kind of been avoiding that, but I just don't think that that's... I think... Uh, I, I, I hope most people by this point are kind of over Sephiroth. You know I what I mean? So. They're not, but I would like them to be. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they finish the remake and it sells well that they're like, ooh. Let's make a Sephiroth could, game. Yeah, we could, do, yeah. we could do a Sephiroth game where like... It's before the events of Final Fantasy VII. Hey, man, they made you know, a Vincent be game. Good. So. It, it, it was Sephiroth very good. before the events of Final Fantasy VII would just be Sephiroth and Soldier as the war yeah. hero, and that would be fine. That would be an interesting game. I would play that. That's, that's where you get me on the Sephiroth angle. I don't think he has enough character and motivation outside of who is Genova? I like Genova. Yeah, I like that's true. So if you make the other game, you get to actually pump character into him, which is maybe. Cool. So I, I, I think that is where that can be a good idea. Um, I, I think we could use more of a, uh, a story on uh, Mike Tyson from uh, Mike Tyson's punch out. I'd play that game. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious that you say that because I kind of thought of that earlier. Um, I was thinking of it from the perspective of uh, I want to be the boss or I want to be the guy. Oh, you yeah. do fight Mike Tyson in that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they still have never made that like into that. a TV series, and it's called the Mike Tyson Mysteries. <laughs> if you've ever seen that, it's a hilarious no. show. Oh my god! If you like Scooby Doo uh, uh -huh. and Adult Swim comedy, uh, it is an Adult Swim comedy in the theme of Scooby Doo, starring Mike Tyson with a talking pigeon voiced by Norm Macdonald. Oh no! It's great. Oh man! I don't know how to follow that up. You so, don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. summarize our conversation here. Give us a Bowser game, Nintendo. Give us a Bowser game. <laughs> Definitely give us a Bowser game. Most of these game ideas need to happen like leading up to the events of the game itself. So because other, otherwise, otherwise, you know how the game's gonna end. Yes, that, I think that's part of it. But also, like, it's it's inevitable, and, like, you can't, like, if it's Bowser, you can't find a way to do anything to make it better in your situation. You know, you're basically just playing out the events from a different camera lens, you know, so I get that. Um, so leading up to the switch to a game, I think, is a great idea. Um, give us a Bowser game, and uh, don't do Sephiroth, oh, except for Tom. Well, do do the do the Sephiroth war story and make him an actual likable character, like a likable protagonist in that game. I'm I'm all for that. That'd be a cool game to me. Um, also, give me the delete a Final Fantasy Tactics game. Just give me another actual Final Fantasy Tactics game. But if you want to make it delete it, that's amazing. That would be the greatest game ever. I would give you a hundred dollars right now. <laughs> and Tom Nook would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, guys. I guess we can we can wrap up just about on time. So thanks, wow. everyone. Yeah, I know. First time in a while that we're wrapping up on time. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for watching. If you liked this video um, or the podcast, make sure you leave a comment and let us know what you thought. Give us reviews. Um, tell us if you know you want to see some specific topic. Um, also recommend that you leave comments about what villains that we missed because there's obviously dozens and dozens of people that we probably never played before that would be really interesting. Maybe we'll bring them up on a future episode. And uh, we have a we have a social media. That's the other one too, guys. We have social media. Um, Twitter, if we're still doing that. Are we still doing that, Megan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, on a somewhat Joypad regular pod. basis. Yes, <laughs> JoyPadPod. Yes, if you add Joypad. us, we'll respond to you eventually. <laughs> eventually yeah on facebook sure. as well on youtube we are just joypad 
if you search Joypad, I think we're like the first videos that come up. Uh, and I think that's everything. Did I miss anything except for Tom? All righty, Tom, take, you know, end this here. Take it away. Well, I'm going to be the villain this time. And I'm going to say, stay joyful, everyone. <laughs> 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 Wait, I mean, don't be joyful. I'm the villain. Nah! Nah. Nah. All right, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.